So good day everyone. So today our, we're going to discuss about the methods of dating. So let's learn together. So methods of dating. So as you all know, methods of dating, dating is used to determine the age or existence of one fossils. So like bones of in organisms that already live or a long time ago or a rocks that can be used in order to determine or when or how or ilang years na ito nag-exist or anong taon na ito nag-exist ang ganitong fossils or ganitong uh, organisms. So stratification of rocks, so when we say stratification, it is the general layout of the strata of a rock. So kumbaga, para siyang layer or layout ng sang strata. So as you can see in the picture, this is a stratification, the layout of the stratum of a rock. So when we say stratum, it is a layer of sedimentary or soil with internally consistent characteristics. So in order, so that's the reason why some of the dating is used because there is some stratum that is consistent in terms of its uh, characteristics or composition, which distinguish it from other layers. A stratum is also called bed. So pinatawag din na bed ang stratum and that's the reason why because of its consistent characteristics mas nalalaman ito or mas uh, madedetermine ng isang geologist or paleontologist ang isang uh, fossils or isang rock that it differs from the other type of uh, stratum when we say strata it is the layers of rocks with internally consistent characteristics or the stratum so earth scientists, we have the geologist, a scientist who studies the earth's crust as well as the process and history that shape it. So sila yung mga scientists na nag-aaral in terms of determining the history or the existence of the earth. So by checking, analyzing, uh, get, getting all the data from the uh, surface of the earth or from the crust of the earth. And also we have paleontology. So paleontology is a scientist that studies fossil remain found on the Earth's surface in order to study the primitive life forms such as plants, animals, fungi, and bacteria. So sila yung naman yung nagpo-focus sa isang fossils or remain ng isang organism in order to uh, determine or study how the ancient ancient life forms or how this uh, life survived during that time and also what are those organisms that survive or live during that time. So stratigraphy. So stratigraphy is a branch of geology dealing with the arrangement of sedimentary of sedimentary rock layers or strata. So as you can see in the picture, it's determining how old a um, uh, how old the fossil is. So pag nasa pinakailalim, so you can see the oldest is the uh, doon nakikita sa pinakailalim na part ng isang stratum or ng isang strata. Then the youngest, ito yung nakikita sa pinakatop ng isang layering or isang stratum. So law of uniformitarianism, geologic process or geological process that takes place today operated in the same manner in the past. So as, you, as they can say nga that the present is the key to the past so that they will determine what the, uh, kung ano man yung nahukay nila, na discovered nila today in our times, it is the way in order to understand our ancestors. It is the key for us to determine pa more how life exists during that time. So it is the idea of a doctor and a farmer, James Houghton. According to him, it is the age of enlightenment. So from the word itself, enlightenment, for us to know the existence of it, how they exist, for us na hindi na tayo maging mangmang sa anumang uh, uh, binuo ng ating nakaraan. 
So uniformitarianism, the theory that geological process is the same as they were in the past. So according to him, or according to uniformitarianism, that kung ano man yung dati at ano yung ngayon, they are just the same. Walang pinagbago. So since the picture kung one million years BC, so ito din daw yung uh, components or composition or characteristics ng isang uh, organism or ng isang rock na nag during that time. So, let's go now with the methods of or methods to determine the age of a rocks or the age of rocks. So, relative dating. So, relative dating are classified as either younger or or older than another object. So relative dating is used to determine the age of the, uh, of the object or order, order of past events but not the absolute age. Kung baga, estimate lang niya that this is the oldest and this is the youngest without giving the exact time, without giving the exact age. So relative dating object is to determine that object classified as old or young. So, when you think old or young, it is a relative dating. From this classification, the ordering of rocks, fossil, or event. So, they use it to determine or to order the rocks from the, from the oldest to youngest. Strata is very important in order or strata of sedimentary rock is important to determine the relative age. So kanina, we already talked about strata is, so it is the layers or internally consistent characteristics. Kasi mas madaling madistinguish kapag ang isang stratum is uh, consistent. Madali siya madetermine from the other type of layers or stratum. So principles of relative dating. So sedimentary rock are formed from sediments are deposited on the bottom of the body of water or bodies of water. So as you all know naman that a sedimentary rocks talaga is a combination of sediments, compactions of sediments. So mostly a sedimentary rock form in the basin or the bodies of water. So second is weathering and erosion of rocks layers happen on earth surface and not underwater. So di ba we already determined the weathering. When we say weathering it is the breakdown of rocks into smaller pieces and erosion it is the motion of the smaller pieces or the product of weathering to move from one place to another. So it happens lang daw on the earth surface where hindi siya nangyayari sa ilalim ng dagat. So, law of superposition. Rocks layer or layers of rocks at the bottom of a geolo or geological sequence. So, when we say law of superposition, the top is the youngest and the um, pinaka bottom is the oldest. So, sedimentary rocks are deposited horizontally. So, when we say horizontally, pahiga siya kumbaga. So, the layers get deformed because of folding faulting or tilting. So, folding, carving of layers, faulting because of the unusual or uneven forces, and tilting is loop or slope of a mountain or slope direction. So, intrusions are younger than the rocks that they cut through. So, mga intrusions are the intrusions mas young sila, while fault cracks or faults are younger than the rocks that they cut through. So, result of fault is younger. So, of leaf weathering and erosion produce unconformity. So, later we'll discuss what unconformity un is. So, inclusion must be older than the rock they are in. So, man yung ginatawag that the principle of inclusion. So, those inclusion ang mas dapat na older kaysa sa uh, nag-embodied lang sa isang rock. So, law of original horizontality. So, from this is the original, the first uh, picture, youngest to oldest, but because of cross-cutting relationship, we have the new youngest, which is the number five, and the 
uh, last uh, rock or layer becomes or muning nahitabo ang cross cutting. Nag-insert kumbaga. Sediment composing a layer of sedimentary rocks are originally deposited horizontally. So, mogid ni siya. It is uh, horizontally deposited. But because of tuma faulting, folding, so it results to the deformation of the layer. So, that happens. So, happens after this deposition. So, because of the motion of the crust, kaya nagkakaroon na deformation or a uh, changes of formation sa layer ng rocks. Unconformity. So, unconformity, a boundary between two rock layers representing an interval. So, this is the interval. They represent the interval within each other. So, also unconformities represent the missing part of the rock that caused or rock caused by the uplift, weathering, erosion, and subsidence. So, when we say subsidence, ito yung paghuhu ng lupa because the lower part is already or it is, ah, kumbaga, empty. Kaya nagkakaroon ng subsidence ang isang Lupa. So, that is what we call unconformities. From the picture itself, it's, it explains na the uh, unconformities. The new strata of rock were deposited or those strata had been eroded. So, law of inclusion, this is to determine which rock is old or, or and which rock is younger. So, here the first picture Figure A, granite is the older, while the figure B is sandstone is the older. So why is that? Sediments are rocks that had been included in a rock layer are older than the sediments. Into the inclusion had been embedded. So any rock dar or minerals or fossils that is entirely contained within another is older. So when it is when you say entirely contained, it is the older rock. But because of inclusion, ang ending there is sa pikas na figure, ang sandstone na asa gitna, pero ang granite is na asa ilalim. Because of the uh, intrusion, kumbaga, because of the inclusion. Inclusion happen when it gets stuck the early stage of the rock as it is forming. So, due to the formation of rocks, kaya nagkakaroon ng inclusion. Kaya yung mga, sometimes, yung mga older rocks is nag, baga um, nag, nabutang sila sa ibabaw. Kaya diba, ato nakita ganina, o loss of preposition, dapat ang older na sa ilalom. But because of the inclusion, some of the sediments, naga, uh, kumbaga, nag-include sila within the lower part of the rock. So, kumbaga, Kumbaga, imong imagine, bato ni siya ang, ang sandstone. Tapos ang granite is balas. So because uh, it is a tiny portion, so there is a tendency gid na iya siyang i-embed. I so that's the tendency ng anong magkaroon of law of enclosure. That was first described by James Cotton. So rock layers. Law of superposition, younger rocks are on the top, older rocks are on the bottom. So, ang oldest is always nasa ilalom, while ang young is always nasa ibabaw. So, rock layers of geological sequence at the bottom are generally older than those on the top. So, always remember when we say superposition, oldest is always at the bottom, while well, youngest is always at the top. So, absolute dating. So, from the picture, it's already a state that absolute dating give the exact time of a uh, fossils. So, objects are assigned a numerical age. Like, for example, my age. So, the absolute uh my absolute dating of my age is 26. Then my relative dating is young. So, yun yung difference between the absolute and the uh, relative dating. Strata is sometimes disturbed 
It determine age in the field is sometimes very difficult because of this disturbances. So there are some uh, intrusion. Yet that's the reason why mahirap magbigay agad ng absolute age ng isang fossils. So carbon dating 14. So as you'll know, carbon dating 14 is often used to date human artifacts. And it is only real, reliable for fossils not older than 50,000 years old or 500 to 50,000 years old. So a carbon dating 14 represents the carbon with atomic weight of 14. And as you all know, carbon 14 is unstable and it is radioactive. So 14 gives a combination number of neutron and proton in one atom of a carbon. So there is assumption, this method makes the assumptions that the amount of carbon represent at the time in the organism died is the same as they found in the atmosphere today. So that's the reason why they use carbon dating 14 because the atmosphere daw and the dead organism has the same compound the pwede nating makita or the same amount of carbon. So as you can see the picture, so it is a combination of proton and neutron of the nitrogen. So here's the explanation of that picture. So plants absorb carbon-14, which is indirectly absorb carbon-14 through photosynthesis. So diba, as we all know that the uh, carbon is very important in terms of uh, this chemical process the photosynthesis. So the animal eat plants. So when the animal eat plants, herbivores eat plants, carnivore eat plants that eat, uh, carnivores eat animals that eat plants. Then carbon-14 becomes part of animal tissue. So once you eat uh, plants that is present of carbon, it is already in our body. Plants and animals use carbon-14 to build tissues such as bones, shells, and DNA. So, <coughs> excuse. So, carbon-14 is very important pala in uh, pagpakusog sa ato mga bukog and also to have a, or para maging mas, kung tatak ang ato ang DNA sequence. So, when living organisms that die, some carbon-14 turns into nitrogen. So, dito na pumapasok yung nitrogen cycle. Because when organisms die, <coughs> they stop absorbing carbon-14. The carbon-14 contained in their tissue decay into nitrogen. So, yung carbon-14 pala is nag uh, form or ina-absorb siya. So, they uh, stop absorbing. Kung namatay tayo, hindi na tayo mag absorb ng carbon. So, ang ending yan, magiging decay siya. Then, it forms into nitrogen. Then, fossils contain traces of carbon-14 that has not turned yet into nitrogen. So, by comparing those, kasi as with the body, it has half-life. So, it takes 1,000 years pa before this carbon will be disappear or diminish. By comparing the traces of carbon-14 found in fossils with the carbon-14, the atmosphere today, and using the known half-life of carbon, scientists can estimate the age of fossils. So because of that, so they, they kumbaga, compare the carbon-14 found in the fossils with the carbon-14 nga ilan nakitaan sa atmosphere today. And by that, they will determine na the half-life. And using the known half-life of carbon, so for example, in 5,730 years, that is the half-life of carbon. So half of carbon remains until sa it will diminish. So yung nakita nila or yung naiwan sa isa ka body or isa ka organism, they will use it to determine kung unsa na ang edad sa isa ka organism from the time she died or from the time it ends its life. So absolute age or carbon dating is also called as absolute age or radiometric dating because it gives the exact or much or exact time in order to determine the age looks at how much radioactive decay has occurred in an object to determine the age so this uranium undergone 
half-light. So unstable atoms such as uranium eventually change into stable atoms such as lead. So the half-life of uranium or the daughter cell or the daughter of the uranium is lead. So as uranium undergoes half-life, ang magpuli sa iya is the daughter cells or daughter atom which is much more stable. So the original version is called parent or isotope and the new version is what we call the daughter atom. So that's, their, that's what happened during the half-life. <coughs> so example also of a half-life. So yun yung kanina yung uranium. So start 250 years old. How old? Then it undergoes half-life. So nag-half na siya, the new stones, in order to mas maintindihan natin. So, 250 years old, nagkaroon, nag-start na ang half-life ng uranium. And which is, as you all know, uranium is unstable and a daughter niya is the lead. Then after another 250 years old, so 500 years old na siya. So, three-fourth of it na ang naging, na diminish or na disappear. Then after, uh, after another 250 years, so, which means 750 years old na ang isa kay uranium. So, gamay na lang ang nabilin sa iya ha. Kung baga, small portion or uh, 20% na lang ang nabilin nga unstable nga uranium. Because uh, nagkaroon na og stable na isotope or daughter atom which is the lead. So, that's how explains the radioactive decay or the half-life of a uh, element or the radioactive uranium. So, maubos, yun na siya nga maubos hantod sa mapuli na ang yahang daughter atom. So, that's all for today. God bless and goodbye.